Hi guys, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Uh, and this short video is going to detail how to construct a 98% confidence interval for a population mean. Uh, but I suppose more importantly, okay, associated with this particular construction, we're going to assume that the population processes standard deviation is known and is given in advance. Okay. In the situation where the population standard deviation is known, the interval is constructed based off a standard normal distribution where we have to calculate particular z-scores that are associated with this 98% confidence interval. But to calculate these z-scores, we're just going to rely upon the standard normal distribution. Okay. Uh, also in relation to the formula, to calculate a 98% confidence interval, the question must tell you uh, information about the sample statistics. In other words, it must tell you information about the sample that was randomly selected from the population. In particular, it must tell you what the sample mean is, okay? x bar. It also must tell you what the sample size has been, in this case small n. Uh, we are assuming that the population standard deviation is known, so sigma must also be given. And the only thing then that's typically left to actually calculate okay, is the appropriate z-score that goes along with a 98% interval. Okay. So in this particular scenario, okay, we're going to assume that 24 cans of beer uh, have been randomly selected from a population line, okay, or sorry, from a production line, and that the average fill of the 24 cans has been recorded as 495 mils and that the population standard deviation is 7 mils. Okay, so that's the scenario and what we'd like to do is we'd like to construct a 98% confidence interval. In other words, we'd like to calculate a lower bound with respect to where the population mean would reside and an upper bound with respect to where the population mean uh, would reside uh, so that we're 98% confident that the true population mean will reside between this, between this lower bound and the upper bound. Okay. So there's a number of statistics and there's a number of uh, parameters that we require uh, from our scenario. Uh, the first thing that we require is we need to know the sample, the sample average or the sample mean. So we need to know x bar. Okay. Now from our scenario here, we know that 24 cans of beer have been randomly selected and that the average, the average fill of the cans is 495 mils. So now we know that x bar is equal to 495. Okay. We also need to know the sample size, small n. Now from the scenario, we know that there are 24 cans of beer that have been selected, so small n is equal to 24. Okay. We also need to know the population standard deviation, in this case sigma, and sigma is defined to be known and it's defined to be 7 mils. The population standard deviation is 7 mils and this needs to be given. If the population standard deviation isn't given, okay, what we need to have in its, in, in its place is the sample standard deviation, in which case the formula will change and we'll rely upon a t-distribution for calculating these particular, I suppose, uh, these particular values. We won't be calculating z-values, we'll be calculating t-values. But because the population standard deviation is known and it's 7 mils, okay, we're going to rely upon the standard normal distribution for this particular interval. Uh, the only thing that's missing now, we need five values, sorry, four, four values. We need the sample mean, which we have. We need the sample size, which we have. We need the population standard deviation, which we have. And also we need the z-score that accompanies or that's coupled uh, to a 98% interval. Now we don't know that z-score just yet. And what we're going to do is we're going to calculate a z-score for a 98% confidence interval. Okay. Uh, so let's work on how to calculate the appropriate z-score. So we're assuming normality, we're assuming the standard normal distribution. So let's just plot the standard normal distribution. Okay, It's a bell-shaped curve. So let me just draw a bell-shaped curve here. It's centered on zero. What we'd like to be able to identify is a lower bound z-score. Okay, Let's call that z1. Okay, And we'd like to identify an upper bound z-score. Okay, let's call this value here Z2, such that 98% of the area between those values resides under the curve. Okay, so let's think about this. If 98% of the area is between these two values, and once we have one, we have the other through symmetry, okay? Uh, if 98% of the area is between th these two values, that means that the tail areas, 
okay in totality okay the tail areas must account for two percent of the area under the curve which means that one percent must be in the right hand tail and which means that one percent must also be in the left hand tail okay so once we have one z score we'll have the other true symmetry so let's concentrate on calculating the right hand tail z score okay so i'm going to reproduce this curve the right hand tail area okay so let me just reproduce this curve okay it's a standard normal curve so it's a bell-shaped curve it's centered on zero uh, we require a z score the z over here that has one percent of the area to its right hand side so it has one percent of the area to its right hand side as a decimal one percent is 0 0.01 so to the right hand side of this z score that we're looking for there should be 0 0.01 of the total area under the curve which is one unit so of the one unit 0 0.01 units should be to its right hand side okay so what does that mean about the left hand area well then that means that the left hand area from our z score down uh, must account for 0 0.99 of the area under the curve okay so let's try to find the z score that has 0 0.99 of the area to its left hand side okay so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to get my tables okay I'm going to look at my tables and I'm going to look for 0 0.99 in the body of the tables. I'm going to try to find 0 0.99. I'm going to find out what row it's on and what column it's on. And that's going to give me the Z score that has that amount of area to its left hand side. So I'm looking for 0 0.99. So 0 0.99 doesn't seem to be here. Okay? But what we do have is we do have 0 0.9896. 0 0.9898, 0 0.9901, and 0 0.9904. So 0 0.9900 is somewhere between those values. So let me just reproduce this particular this particular row and these particular columns uh, from this particular table uh, on, 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 our, on our workings here. Okay, so what we have is we have our Z tables. These tables that we're, we're, we're working off give us areas to the left-hand side of particular z-scores. So we're looking for 0 0.99. So I have 0 0.9896. So 0 0.9896 is under the column 0 0.01. Uh, I have 0 0.9898. So 0 0.9898 eight is under the column 0 0.02 i have 0 0.9901 is under the column 0 0.03 okay continuing out and we have 0 0.9904 is under the column 0 0.04 okay and all of these particular values okay all of these values here okay uh, can be found on the row uh, 2.30 so 2.30 okay so let's the value we're looking for is 0 0.99 which is 0 0.9900 now 0 0.9900 is somewhere in here 0 0.9900 now we can see that the that the area that is provided just to the left of 0 0.9900 is 0 0.9898 that's effectively two units less than what we're looking for and the area that's provided to the right hand side of it is 0 0.9901 that's effectively one unit to the right hand uh, one unit above it so this area isn't halfway between these but look at the area to the left of this 0 0.9896 is four units less than 0 0.9900 and look at the area over here 0 0.9904 that's four units greater than it so what we know now is this is that the z score that we're going to be looking for must be between 0 0.9896 and it must be between 0 0.9904 this Z score here for 0.9896 is 2.31, 2.31. That's the Z score for this value. 
okay? And the z-score for this value here, okay, 0 0.9904, is on the row 2.30 and under the column 2.2. 3, 4, so it's under the column uh, 0 0.04, okay? So what we know is that the z-score that we require is halfway between these. So the z-score that we require must be equal to 2.31 plus 2.34 divided by 2, and that gives us a value of 2.65 divided by 2, which is going to result in a z-score that is 1.32. Five. Okay, so the z-score 1.325 is halfway between 